The Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns return home as they enter the final two weeks of the regular season. Tonight, the Cajuns open their four-game homestand against a team that struggled as of late. The Houston Cougars broke a six-game losing streak over the weekend. Tonight, they'll seek a start to their first winning streak in nearly a month. The Cajuns take on the Cougars next on ESPN+. It's a beautiful night at Yvette Girard Field at Lamson Park. It's been 17 days since the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns have played a game in their home stadium. Since then, they've won eight out of nine games, have beaten two Power Five opponents, and have taken first place in the Sun Belt Conference race. Houston, meanwhile, is looking to go on a run at the end of the season. The Cougars were swept by Wichita State, dropped a single game to Texas, and lost two to Central Florida before beating the Knights on Sunday to snap a six-game skid. Hello again, everyone. A most cordial welcome to Yvette Girard Field at Lamson Park, along with the Hall of Famer, Yvette Girard. I'm Ian Ozan. Yvette, Houston has had a tough road to hoe as of late, as we mentioned, that six-game losing streak, but this is a team that's capable of reaching the regionals, and they have the bats to prove it. Cougars exploded for eight runs in the final three innings to beat number 18 UCF. Two of the six losses came in extra innings. Cougars' batting average as a team is only 268. Becca Schulte has 12 home runs on the season and is on a 15-game on-base streak. She is the second leading hitter with a 303 batting average. She went one for two with a home run, sacrifice fly, two runs scored, and three RBIs on Sunday. Now the Cajuns are glad to be back home after a two and a half week road trip. Louisiana went eight and one during that stretch, sweeping South Alabama to take first place in the Sun Belt Conference before sweeping their Midwestern road trip, beating St. Louis, Illinois, and Indiana. The Cajuns slipped in their first game last weekend against Appalachian State, but they bounced back to win the final two games of that Sun Belt series. The Cajuns bats cooled off at App, App State before coming along on Saturday and all day Sunday. This is the final midweek game and the final final home series of the weekend, so the Cajuns are looking to end their home schedule on a good note. And Carly Heath has been absolutely amazing over the last few weeks. Carly Heath, four consecutive games with a home run, including two on Sunday against App State. Heath leaves the team with 11 home runs, hitting 348 with a slugging percentage of 942. With those numbers, she earned the Sun Belt Conference Player of the Week. And another Louisiana Ragin' Cajun who has been spectacular over the course of the last two and a half weeks is the pitcher Megan Shorman. Four of her ten victories coming during that Midwestern swing and the Appalachian State trip. She picked up one of the victories at South Alabama, picked up a win at St. Louis in a one-hit effort, which, by the way, in her first at-bat of the season, recorded an RBI double, nearly was a two-run home run, missed it by about a foot, and then after that, picked up a win at Illinois, and then another win at Appalachian State. Megan Shorman this season has been absolutely phenomenal, and when you look at her numbers, you look at what she's done, she's setting herself up not only to have a banner year, but also setting herself up to have a banner career at Louisiana. Absolutely, she's gonna throw a rise, a curve. The curve is her go-to pitch, has a tremendous changeup, and, um, Command is her game. And that first pitch catching the heart of the plate for a strike, going to that changeup to begin the contest. On the season, Megan Shorman, a 2.17 ERA. We mentioned that 10 and 4 record. Her 10th start of the season delivers the 0-1. Swing and a miss by Paige Holsey. The junior batting 348 on the season. Has only nine strikeouts, but right now down to the count 0-2. That's some doozy changeup she's throwing out there. That'll uh, put any hitter. Uh, on their toes and on their front foot. 0 2 pitch coming from Shorman. Misses low for a ball. Played umpire tonight is Eddie Bourne. First base, Michael Thibodeau. Third base, Laura King. And in the case of Laura King, she'll be working a ton of work this weekend. Not only, not only working tonight's game, but also be working the LHSAA State Tournament, which begins at both Broussard Park and at Frash Park in Sulphur tomorrow. 1-2 pitch, check swing. Holsey does not go, says the umpire. Two balls, two strikes. How exciting. Broussard, my uh, hometown, uh, hosting the Select State Softball Tournament. And it's one of those things where even those who don't care for the split in high school sports, especially here in Louisiana, it's a beautiful thing because a place like Broussard, a beautiful park like that, gets an opportunity to showcase itself. 2-2 pitch, grounded to first base. 
Fielded cleanly by Cradair, or pardon me, by Maya at second, who throws over to first and Cradair for out number one. Slow, slow ground ball, and Mayu played that well. Melissa Mayu, the native of France, who's been a vacuum in playing at second base this year, rarely commits any errors there, and once again showing why Jerry Glasgow and company trust her in that spot. Utility player is Melissa Mayu. She can play anywhere except for pitching, and even then you put her there, she could probably do it well. She Amen. She Amanda even Carton had to, comes to bat. Yeah, she even had to catch some while Piscus was out with was out with an injury. She did indeed, and played there primarily last year. Now finally going back to working the rest of the infield. As Amanda Carton watched the first pitch high for a ball, 1-0 pitch comes in, fouled back, one and one. Amanda Carton, 310 batting average on the season. You look at Houston's lineup. And you don't see batting averages that are all that flashy. Holsey, the leadoff batter, had the highest in the starting lineup at 348. But this is a team that, despite the numbers and despite the relatively low team batting average, is a team that more than likely will be in a regional. As Carton swings and misses on the 1-1 pitch, one ball, two strikes. They do like to run, not as much as Jerry Glasgow likes to run, but they aren't called Cougars for nothing. No, indeed. They are, they're fast. They can show off that speed when they want. But it's been few and far between this year. One-two pitch, chase that one high into foul territory. Several players running forward in no man's land, and it drops into the net. Kayla Falterman, the left fielder, chased after it, as did Stormy Kotsenik, who's playing third base tonight. And a bit of a change defensively for Louisiana there, as for the better part of the road trip, Laney Crater came in as a pinch hitter. Stormy Kaltzenich played at first base. Now we're seeing that adjustment again where Kaltzenich is moving back to third base. Jerry Glasgow has moved his lineup around all year long. Such a young team just trying to find the perfect combination. But he has so many options. One, two, pitch into foul territory. And caught by Stormy Kaltzenich for out number two. And Kaltzenich making the most of the opportunity to play at third base. Retiring Carden and bringing up Aspen Howie, the senior batting 282 on the season. This is a young team that Jerry Glasgow has a lot of freshmen in the roster. You look at the starting lineup tonight, six freshmen. And despite the youth, despite the inexperience, this is a team that is exceeding expectations, not in the respect that they're competing for the Sun Belt Conference title, but they're just a few ways to win from clinching. Conversely, Houston only has one freshman in the lineup tonight. Howie, a senior, watched the first pitch on the outside corner for a strike. 0 1 pitch, misses high for a ball, 1 and 1. Kind of no surprise there that the Cajuns are dominating the conference. Uh, they have a streak that's in, just incredible. It has to go down as one of the all time greats with like UConn basketball or maybe Tennessee basketball. Louisiana Tech basketball in the day for women when they were just dynamite. As that pitch catches the outside corner, one ball, two strikes. Something we talked about before the game is the strike zone in college softball where you see some umpires give a little bit more on the corner. Some will give higher pitches or lower pitches. So far tonight, we're seeing Eddie Bourne give a lot on the outside corner. Shorman with the one-two pitch. This is outside, and Pisco's there trying to frame it. As a coach, that's something you like to see, your catcher trying to buy that call. But there's a fine line between getting it and just begging. And as an umpire, how do you feel about that? If you do it right and you can stick it, you might get the call. But Pisco's pulling the ball in right there. It was easy to tell it was well outside. 2-2 pitch from Shorman. Swing and a miss, struck her out. And the Cajuns retire Houston in order in the top of the first. Stormy Kotsnick, Maddie Hayden, and Carly Heath coming to bat. We're still scoreless. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. We all have dreams. I want to dance. 
I like to build things. I want to explore. For over 120 years, the University of Louisiana at Lafayette has made it possible for young dreams to become realities. So go ahead, dream big. We'll help you make those dreams come true. Kenna Wilkie in the circle for Houston, the senior with a 386 ERA and an 8-8 record on the season. She's going to throw a rise, a curve, a drop, and a change. She's going to throw in the 64, 65 mile an hour range, and then she's going to throw that change up in about a 53 mile an hour change. So that's a great speed difference. Storm Kotsnick watches the first pitch at the knee for a strike. Kotsnick on the season, a 378 batting average. Has some power in that bat. Wilkie has the most strikeouts on the team, on the staff, 110 innings pitch with uh, 102 strikeouts, but 98 hits in 110 innings pitch. Kaltznick watched that pitch high and away for a ball. At Appalachian State, Kaltznick, from a defensive standpoint, was fantastic. Throughout the road trip, showing flashes of brilliance, with several extra base hits, but also patience at the plate like we're seeing here, watching that pitch miss for a ball. Two balls, one strike to Kotzelnik. As Kotzelnik awaits the wind of delivery, and that change up, missing high and in for a ball, and she's ahead, three and one, and that's one of the hallmarks of Jerry Glasgow's teams. They're patient. They're not going to swing at anything that, that they don't necessarily like. They're going, to le they're going to take the free bases that are given to them. Speaking of Jerry Glasgow, he's in the dugout, and Lacey Prejones at third base. Did you see any of that during the weekend? Uh, th there was one case with that, and with, with Jerry, he's dealing with a foot injury oh, okay. that's sidelining him. During the, the road trip, he threw batting practice, and it aggravated an old injury that he had. And as a result, yeah, he's sitting, and the other coaches are handling and it's tough to stay in that long. Three balls, one strike. That pitch misses, and Kotsnick has a leadoff walk. And that's a no-no a for the Cougars. You never want to lead, uh, lead off the game with a leadoff walk. Now, in terms of coaching, you mentioned earlier that, that when we were talking before the game, that the game is slowing down. This is a softball by nature is a fast game, but you see a lot of coaches, a lot of catchers going out calling time, and trying to slow down the pace to get their pitchers more uh, calm and collected. How has it changed from just a few years ago when you were still in the game to today? Well, it's a point of emphasis this year that they're trying to keep the game moving, that uh, there's only so many conferences. I think it's seven defensive conferences allowed. Um, I'm not a fan of the two, hour, two and a half hour, three hour softball game because it's, you know, starting to drift towards baseball, and that's what's made our game so fabulous. It's fast, it's fun, sit on the edge of your seat. As Maddie Hayden grounds into a 6-4 fielder's choice, Stormy Kotsnick retired on the play, brings up Carly Heath. Five home runs in the last four games, a four-game home run streak. Looks to keep it alive here with the runner on at first base and one out. First pitch misses outside for a ball. Kenna Wilkie struggling early on. Having trouble finding the zone. And with Carly Heath, if you leave a pitch hanging over the zone, she'll knock it out of the park. It's 43 walks in 110 innings. Well, it's 44 walks now. 1-0 pitch. Catches the zone for a strike. Carly Heath with two home runs on Sunday against Appalachian State. Both of them still sitting on the roof of App State's <laughs> indoor practice facility. Carly Heath, who came here as a, as a pitcher, is developing into quite a hitter. Pitch misses high, two balls, one strike. And the funny thing is, we've seen Carly Heath up until last week still warming up in the bullpen when needed. She is that extra weapon that the Cajuns can put in the circle, but 
her most explosive weapon has been in that left-handed batter's box. She has been nothing short of amazing. 2-1 pitch. Catches the bottom part of the zone. Outside corner, strike two called. And South Carolina transfers having quite a season. She is indeed Sunbelt Pitcher of the Week. Or excuse me, Sunbelt Player of the Week with her five home runs last week. 2-2 pitch, swing and a miss, and a rare strikeout from Carly Heath for the second out. Good-looking rise ball on the outside corner where Heath can't catch up to. Only her 10th strikeout of the year. For comparison, she has 11 home runs on the season. When your home run to strikeout ratio is, uh, is like that, you're doing something right. And it brings up Sophie Piscos, the sophomore catcher, batting 348 on the year. Harris, Tennessee native, swings on the first pitch, little flare to left field, drops on the line, it's a fair ball. Maddie Hayden holds up at second base as Piscos has the first hit of the game. Two down for Alexa Langleers. A little Judy off the bat there, sometimes you have to not only be good, you have to be lucky, and that's a CNI single for sure. Certainly is, hit it off fisted. the handle. Yeah, fisted, just enough strength to get it out there. And that's a good heads up play on the part of Maddie Hayden as well. That's one where if she holds up and doesn't run fully to second on the fly, she might be put out running to second because it took a long time for that ball to drop. As the first pitch to Alexa Langliers catches the corner for a strike, the freshman hitting 341 on the season. With runners on first and second and two out in the bottom of the first inning. Cajuns have a chance here early to get their excitable crowd into the game. And this is an excitable crowd here as that pitch misses low. And that's something about Lamson Park before that Lady Cajun Park, back when it was still all metal bleachers with a small press box. The fan support that Lafayette has given the University of Louisiana and the Raging Cajuns is nothing short of spectacular. That pitch misses outside for Everybody the ball. in the country in the softball world knows about the Raging Cajun fans. Lady Cajun fans, they, you know, that first year we went to the World Series, we throw in Mardi Gras beads, and of course, everyone is feeding everyone in the parking lot, so we became a fan favorite immediately. 2-1 pitch. Catches the outside corner for a strike. Two balls, two strikes to Alexa Langleers. You mentioned feeding other fans wherever the Cajuns go, and that's a tradition that still continues today. It's a tradition that we saw at Texas State, at South Alabama, even throughout part of the road trip in the Midwest. Parents drove up and were cooking, not just for the Cajuns, but for the other teams as well. As that pitch catches Langleers in the arm, she's awarded the base, and now the base is Jack for Melissa Mayu. I tell you, you know, I say it all the time to my friends across the country. We don't have beaches and mountains, but we have people that want to love you and want to feed you because we have the best food in the world. We certainly do. And while the food may make your stomach feel good, I can tell you that softball did not make Alexa Langlier's wrist feel good. That is going to hurt in the morning. Yeah, there's nothing soft about this game. Langlier's at first base shaking her hand and her wrist, trying to get some feeling back into it. Right now, Louisiana, with bases loaded, Melissa Mayu coming to bat. The senior hitting 330 on the year. Now with the golden opportunity to increase her RBI total above the 20 mark. Got ducks on the pond here. Mayu was one for three on Sunday at Appalachian State. Was 0 for four on Saturday. First pitch is a ground ball, hit to second base, fielded cleanly by Schulte and throws to Matthews to retire the side. So the Cajuns can't score any runs with bases loaded. We remain scoreless after one complete inning between Louisiana and Houston. Oh, I've traveled all over telling folks they could save by bundling home and car insurance. I love my new home, but it might be too Victorian. Oh gosh, interesting hemline on this. PTI, I need the PDF, C-O-B, A-K-A, E-O-D. What's the E-T-A? A-S-A-P, F-Y-I. See my I am? T-L-D-R. What? Too long, didn't read. We don't need any more acronyms, but we could all use more ways to save. BMX, YOLO!
Lemons, lemons, lemons. The world is so full of lemons. When you become an Expedia member, you can instantly start saving on your travels. So you can go and see all those lemons for less. Blackness in full and at home. In the Endscape. Louisiana and Houston score is going to second inning. As we see the defensive starters for Louisiana, Sophie Piscos has been a star at catcher. She also loves the game. You can see her between innings dancing to the music. And Yvette is a coach. I'm sure that makes you happy to see a college player enjoying the game for all it's worth. She's the heart and soul of that team. But I'm going to tell you, the fans love her. She, um, she brings joy to the ballpark. She certainly does, is Becca Schulte. Sits on deck, Bethany Bush at the bat. First pitch caught the zone for a strike, as does the 0-1 pitch catching the zone. Shorman's changeup is looking better and better as the season goes. And Bethany Bush having trouble figuring out where the changeup is going, the Baytown, Texas native. With the 0-2 count, Shorman with the pitch. Swung on a rise ball, high fly ball, hit to right field. Kramer Rush Day makes the catch for the first down. And it brings up Becca Schulte. We talked about her in pregame. Batting 303 on the season, 12 home runs, 43 RBI. She'll certainly be one to watch as we go back and look at that rise ball. Yeah, you definitely have to get on top of that ball, and it served its purpose with a big pop up. Schulte is a transfer from LSU. Got to watch her play a couple of seasons there, at least one for sure. Wings on the first pitch and misses. She is a super, super senior. She is in her seventh year as a Division I student athlete. Wow. She's only one of two known in the country right now, and that's because of COVID. 0 oh, 1 pitch coming to Schulte, the wind to deliver. Pops that one foul and into the net. No balls, two strikes. I've heard of people taking the seven-year route in college, <laughs> but I've never heard of an athlete doing it. But then again, when you look at COVID and what it's done to college athletics, if you're someone like Schultz and you have the eligibility available, you may as well use it. Well, what it's done, that the, probably one of the only positive things about COVID, it's allowed them to go into postgraduate work. She's working on her graduate degree. All of these super seniors uh, are, are on their second degrees, and that's awesome. 0-2 pitch misses outside for a ball, 1-2. And, and I think that's something that gets lost in all of this. We hear about, oh, teams are taking advantage or schools are taking advantage of the rule. But you look at the students who are taking advantage of it, and by the time they're done, they'll use their athletic scholarship money to pay for graduate work that otherwise may have left them in, in debt after they got their degree. Schulte files that one down the left field and line may, out of play. Maybe they'll have a degree they can really use instead of a piece of paper saying that you graduated. <laughs> And that's the beauty, to get out, be a college softball player, take seven years, get your bachelor's degree, come back post-COVID, get your master's degree. The NCAA is fond of saying that most of their athletes go pro in something other than sports. Yeah. And you look at Becca Schulte, she'll be a testament to that. One-two pitch, swing and a miss, struck her out. And Megan Shorman with her second strikeout of the afternoon doing yeoman's work against this Houston Cougars squad. Yeah, she looks really good right now. Coming out and for every first pitch was a strike and she's filling up the strike zone. And that helps the defense when they know that their pitcher is gonna compete and throw strikes and not be a marathon inning out there. As Katie Ray Brown comes to bat, swings on the first pitch, another changeup, fooling a batter, strike. I love that they're leading off with change-ups. And Megan Shorman, you see that look on her face, just absolutely confident right now after making quick work in the first five batters she's faced. 0-1 pitch to Brown, misses high for a ball. You mentioned the vibrant crowd, a rare midweek game this season. Last one of the season at Lamson Park and still people filing in. A lot of people just now getting off of work. And a beautiful day in southwestern Louisiana and nice and cool, not a scorcher. See that rise ball jumping right over the bat. 
That was a scorcher of a pitch. <laughs> One ball, two strikes. See, it starts as a starts in the zone and then climbs up. And that's the key. It's got to start in the zone to entice the hitter to swing. One ball, two strikes to Katie Ray Brown. Shorman with the pitch. Misses outside, two and two. See that curveball that I don't know if it has a lot of spin as opposed to just getting there, sweeping across the plate. Calm wind here at Lamson Park this afternoon. Temperature yep. about 77 degrees right now. 2 2 pitch. Foul back. Count holds. It was actually cool this morning. Felt great. I know late April and you have cool weather. Yeah, it was. What like is this world coming to? In the 60s. Don't worry, we'll pay for it in June, July, and August, and <laughs> September. Just when we say we have magnificent weather. I'm sure the Houston Cougars enjoyed the brief respite from the warm weather they've had in their hometown. 2-2 pitch, swung on and fouled back. You know, that's funny. I had a player here that was from Houston, and we had a bet one time because she just kept whining about how much it was raining in Lafayette. And I asked her, I said, you four hours down the road, three hours down the road. You have the same exact weather as Lafayette. <laughs> so we measured, we looked it up, and it was very close to being equal. Precipitation. 2-2 two -two pitch from Shorman, misses outside, full count to Katie Ray Brown. And you mentioned a player from the Houston area. You had a player here who went on to coach at Houston in Kyla Hall. Still, I say to this day, after 34 years, 35 years of coaching, 31 on the collegiate level, the best softball player I ever coached. Strike three called on Katie Ray Brown. Third strike out for Megan Shorman this afternoon. Through one and a half, we remain scoreless. Oh, I've traveled all over, telling folks they could save by bundling home and car insurance, but Here's the real secret, eye contact. We just had a moment. Geico. I want ice cream. Seriously? I'm gonna drive to get my ice cream. No, you're not. Play with this. No, I'm driving. Really? Drinking and driving? How old are you? I'm a big boy. <laughs> I knew things were coming to an end. When you're the man in the arena, there's no thrill like that. There's still a desire to win. Back on ESPN Plus, the Houston Cougars on defense with Kenna Wilkie on this in the circle, Katie Ray Brown behind the plate, L.A. Matthews, Becca Schulte, Bailey Myers making up the infield first through third with the shortstop. Rock Benavidez as the first pitch misses for a ball to Laney Crater. She had a home run in the Appalachian State Series. St. Louis area native with family from Karen Crow. Swings of the 1-0 pitch and misses. That's a great look and change up. The look and the sell of the pitch, dynamite. Crater is a freshman batting 339 with only four home runs. Swings and misses. That was a thing of beauty. Let's see if they'll throw it again. Crater is getting her money's worth with that hack. You see her helmet's coming off of her. She's swinging so hard. One-two pitch. This time went with the curveball. Missed outside. 
two and two. What was that pitch? The one we saw a second ago. What do you call that? Is that screw a backdoor or a screwball? That last ball? one was a screwball. If you see the pitcher step left and then come in and throw right, that's usually a screwball. Right there, same pitch. And it misses outside, full count. See Lacey Prejean at third base there. We talked about that. Mm -hmm. And Lacey Prejean has not just a softball background, but also played pro baseball on a barnstorming circuit. So she knows a thing or two about the bat sports. Payoff pitch to Laney Crater. Swing and fouled back. I think that was the change up there. It was a little high, floated in. Probably why Crater got a piece of that pitch. This is exactly how you want your hitters to swing. Swing hard all the time because the ball, the bat might just hit the ball. In real time, it looked like it would have been a ball, but she was in the right to swing at it because it was in the zone. That pitch, though, misses high and away. And Laney Crater has a leadoff walk in the bottom of the second. But Wilkie's not making it easy on herself by uh, walking these leadoff hitters. Got to just find uh, more than one pitch in an at-bat to get hitters out. She threw two really good change-ups and then just kind of missed on some pitches. Raina O'Neill comes in to pinch run, and Raina O'Neill has had limited playing time and battling injuries throughout the season. And O'Neill who did not make the road trip through the Midwest and into Appalachian State, gets an opportunity to run for a Laney Crater here. That's a tremendous athlete out of the lineup for the Cajuns. As Kramer Ushday comes to bat. Ushday nicknamed the Gator by her friends and family because of her aggression, both offensively and defensively, as she grounds that one into right field, a base hit going to third and sliding in his own heel. Now a throw to first base. Did she get back in time? Yes, she did. I tell you, that play worked because I'm not sure it was a hit and run. I'll have to go back and look. But Schulte stepped over towards second base side. It just opened a gap for that ball. Watch. Look at Schulte. Yeah, she was expecting her to pull it closer to the center, but it went to right field. And a nice hustle by Raina O'Neill to recognize the situation and to get there. And when you have Rain O'Neill on the base pads, she gives you a burst of speed that is will certainly help you out going down the stretch. Yeah, someone without Raina O'Neill's wheels might have been thrown out at third because that was a nice, strong throw from Halsey. Yeah, give credit where credit's due. Paige Halsey ran up and covered up the mistake by Becca Schulte. And to give Schulte credit where credit's due, Ushde likes to pull towards the middle. That's where she's hit a lot of her pitches this year. But in that particular case, went a little bit farther towards first base, got into right field, and Holsey was Johnny on the spot. Yeah, it's like I said, I'm confused as to what, whether she thought that was a hit and run, but you saw Coach Vesley out there saying, you know, play over there. <laughs> And now for Louisiana, runners on the corners with nobody out, as we see Kristen Veasley and Jerry Glasgow as the conference comes to an end. And Kayla Falterman comes to bat, another freshman batting 426 on the season. And you know he's not going to leave Eshte just sitting over there at first base with a first and third situation. And something we saw at Appalachian State in this same situation the runner at first, in this case, would be Ushday, takes off for second, draws a throw to second, allowing the runner at third, O'Neill, to score. Swing on the first pitch, tag out, throw to first, a double play, but it scores Raina O'Neill to make it one nothing. Yeah, got the run in, but kind of blew up a big inning for the, for the Cajuns here. So a 4-3 double play. Good job by Schulte, though, I mean. There was no play at home. And as you mentioned, blew up the inning. Gets rid of the damage. Ground ball two hopper. Nice job running up on the ball to play it. Gets attacked, throws over. Falchman gets credit for the RBI, but Houston still finds itself down one nothing. First pitch to Kostnick right down the middle for a strike. Maybe a base running mistake there where she just kind of ran into the tag. I don't know if she could have stopped, but that's what you should do. 
so and that they can't turn that double play so easy. And the Cajuns coach is talking about that right now in the dugout as that pitch is put in the dirt for a ball. Jerry Glasgow, Kevin Myers, Lacey Prejean, all discussing that particular situation. Two out, nobody on for Louisiana. They lead 1-0, bottom of the second inning. Wilkie winds, delivers. Kaltznick watches it outside for a ball, 2-1. and one. But the Cajuns do strike blood first. They do indeed. As Stormy Kaltznick, the top of the order comes up. She walked her first time in this game. And the Cajuns dugout showing some excitement now that they've taken the lead. 2-1 pitch, swing and a miss, 2-2. Two and two. Give Wilkie credit. She is staying in this despite the fact that she's given up the lead in this frame, coming back and delivering some of her best stuff to Stormy Koselnik. And she has some pitches that work. She's just got to put a few more together for an, in, an at bat. Her go to pitch is that, that screwball, but it's off the plate. She's just got to make some small adjustments with her pitches. As yeah, she missed there, not by much, though. Full count for Stormy Koselnik. Second time tonight that Kaltznick has worked herself full. Good eye by the leadoff hitter. That's a swing hit well to left field, but there to make the catch is Amanda Carton to retire the side, but not before Louisiana scores one run off a hit. Thanks to a Kayla Faltzman RBI. Cajuns lead it 1-0 over Houston. PTI, I need the PDF, C-O-B, A-K-A, E-O-D. What's the E-T-A? A-S-A-P, F-Y-I. See my I am? T-L-D-R. What? Too long, didn't read. We don't need any more acronyms, but we could all use more ways to save. PMX, YOLO! I want ice cream. Seriously? I'm gonna drive to get my ice cream. No, you're not. Play with this. No, I'm driving. Really? Drinking and driving? How old are you? I'm a big boy. <laughs> Pack your first shave with the Philips One Blade First Shave. Designed to protect your skin against nicks, cuts, and burns. Hack your first shave. The Houston Cougars trail Louisiana 1-0 as we go to the third inning. Kristen Beasley originally joined the Houston family in 2011 as a Cougars assistant coach. Took over as head coach about six years ago and since then has done a fantastic job. She was an NFCA first team All-American player at Oklahoma. USA Softball Player of the Year quarter finalist. She, she was all Big 12 this, all Big 12 that. She had a fabulous career doing a great, you know, great job as a young coach. As the first pitch to L.A. Matthews catches the zone for a strike. No balls, one strike to Matthews with a 311 batting average. And Veasley, before becoming the head coach, was an assistant under Kyla Hall Holis, who played for you here at what was then the University of Southwestern Louisiana and led the Cajuns to the 1993 Women's College World Series. Matthews swings and misses 0 2. Matthews, a freshman from Concord, North Carolina. Yes, that is her name, L.A. Matthews. <laughs> No word if L.A. will study for a law degree. <laughs> Look that one up, you youngsters. 0-2 pitch to Matthews. The wine delivery from Shorman. Check swing, but fouled off. Just kind of poked at it to stay in the battle there. 11 RBI on the year, but no home runs. Contact hitter, but not necessarily contact and power. Just trying to get on base and use that speed. And that's the beautiful thing about the game of softball. We talked about how quickly it goes. You don't necessarily have to be a power hitter. Just get it to the outfield, 
one way or another and get on base. However, Matthews can't do it there. Swings and misses on the changeup, one down. Well, that's how slapping came into being, a right-handed hitters that maybe weren't very strong but had a lot of speed. People flipped them around on the left side. And this game, when it comes to slapping and balls tapped and with touch, it's a game that uh, you can't make a mistake. You have to be error-free sometimes to, to win. Megan Shorman's been error-free tonight. Four strikeouts on the evening is the first pitch to Bailey Myers. It's been Catches really for a strike. Being really good at setting up hitters and then putting them away. Showing all her different weapons, showing some of the best change-ups I've seen her throw. And she comes back with her hard stuff, with her rise and her curveball. 0-1 oh, pitch from Shorman. Swing and a miss from Myers, 0-2. Oh, and, and Megan Shorman is in the zone. She's been in the zone for the better part of the last month or so, but right now you can see she is dialed in. And she's... Uh... She's the second hardest thrower on the staff behind Lamb, but it must be a close competition. Both of them getting near the 70 mile an hour mark over the last few weeks. They have steadily improved their speed throughout the season. That pitch misses high one and two. Well, Shorman has uh, transferred from Kentucky and Rachel Lawson, the coach at Kentucky, said she is the hardest thrower she ever had. And that's saying something considering some of the talent that's come through there. But you know, Ian, the, the trick is still, it has to move through the zone. One, two, pitch, and that one just narrowly missed. Curveball came just inside, two and two. When you throw that hard, it's just imperative that you have the changeup that she's throwing. Tried to sneak that in there. Low rise, a little bit too much inside. But something we've seen with Shorman is she's managed to fool batters and get them to swing at that all season long. Oh, she's working all quadrants. As that pitch is lined to the left field, the first base hit of the evening for Houston as Bailey Myers reaches base. Brings up Rock Benavidez. Going back, looking at the replay. Hung it over the plate just a little bit too much and good timing there by Myers. Good job of hitting though, jumped on that mistake. Now the senior from Corpus Christi, Texas comes on, or comes up rather, with the runner on first base and one out. Top of the third inning, Louisiana leads 1-0. An RBI ground out. Scored the Cajuns' first run of the night. Benavidez fouls that one out of play. What a great name for a softball player or a baseball player, Rock. Rock Benavidez, that puts her first team all name. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. To think about that, start my own team of names. You've had some, some players that have names. had some great names. Blaze, Blaze Talbot was a great name. She was your first scholarship first player. First scholarship player for the Lady Cajuns. 0-1 pitch to Benavidez. Tried to check a swing, but she went. No, umpire will check. And now gets confirmation that she did go. Michael Thibodeau didn't hesitate. Yeah, she got fooled by that pitch. She wanted to stop, but she knew immediately that she went. I keep saying it doesn't take much to offer these days, but that definitely was a, a swing. No balls, two strikes to Benavidez. Shorman with the pitch. Benavidez swings. Fly ball down the right field line, but foul. That was a changeup that wasn't quite as effective. You could see it from up here. And uh, I think Rock saw it also. She just got a little piece of it. That ball's just hanging there. It's got to get there. Meaning like, you know, it needs to be thrown like on that same plane as a, another pitch. Benavidez saw it, but she saw it a little bit too late if she's a hair quicker there. That's the difference between a foul ball and possibly an RBI double. 0-2 pitch for Shorman. Benavidez watches it inside. One and two. The Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns playing the first of four home games, their final home stand of the season. After tonight, the Cajuns will play a three-game set against Coastal Carolina here at Lamson Park. Game one on Friday, 6 o'clock. You can see it here on ESPN+. The final two games played as part of a doubleheader on Saturday. 
One two pitch, swing and a miss by Benavidez. Two down in the inning. Gets her on the big curveball. Worked her inside, changed her up. Came with the big sweeping curveball to get that K. Fifth K of the afternoon. Look at the spin on that ball. How do you teach a pitcher to put that kind of a spin on a softball? It's all in the wrist. It's one thing to see a pitch like that in real time, but to see it spin in slow motion is. And then it's got a little tilt to it, so. As the first pitch to Paige Holsey misses down and away for a ball. Holsey grounded out to second her first time up. Megan Shorman now with five strikeouts on the afternoon. Delivers that pitch, misses just high for a ball. Did she go? The umpire says no, she did not. She didn't even move. Taking a look at the replay. Ooh, no, well, no I, I think, think so. she held back. Now he, she's a lefty and he asked for help from first base. And that's a new mechanic this year. Okay. Where in the college game, the umpire who remains on the corner will get the question. Okay, because I thought maybe that was wrong since it, uh, it used to be the... It used to be you go to the person who was who had the better angle, but now they're going to the person who's closer. By that, the umpire on the corner. Okay. As that pitch catches, two balls, one strike. And there's nobody at third because he's at second right yeah, now. Laura King working at second base, she, moving from sorry. third to the second base position. Yeah, it's one of those mechanics this year where... And that's changed? That's changed uh, this year. That's in the uh, casebook for this particular season. 2-1 wonder, pitch. Wonder why. Catches the corner. Two balls, two strikes. I'm not sure why either. I, I guess the college commission or the college commissioners association the cca feels that the umpire on the corner has a better, better view better view because he or she is closer good to have an official in the booth sometimes two balls two strikes shoreman delivers swing and a miss six strike out of the evening it's holsey goes down on strikes no run scored, one hit, no errors, a runner left on base. We go to the bottom of the third inning. Louisiana leads it one to nothing. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes, you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. We all have dreams. I want to dance. I like to build things. I want to explore. For over 120 years, the University of Louisiana at Lafayette has made it possible for young dreams to become realities. So go ahead, dream big. We'll help you make those dreams come true. Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns led by Jerry Glasgow. And it's hard to believe Jerry's been here for since 2018. Time has flown by. And he has kept this program at the level and the expectation that the fans and everyone else in this community is, has had. He, is, he has done a good job of maintaining the success that the Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns have historically had as the first pitch to Maddie Hayden is called a strike. She reached on a fielder's choice the first time up. Huge expectations for this program. Let's face it, it's been the best program the university has had when right. it comes to athletics. And in, depending on the year, it's been the best program across all the universities in the state. As that pitch catches the bottom of the zone for a strike, no balls, two strikes to Maddie Hayden. 
And to think, when this program was started 41, 42 years ago, it was in the middle of a, of a cow pasture <laughs> bordering Bertrand Drive and players having to run across Bertrand Drive to retrieve balls. 0-2 <laughs> pitch true. is a ground ball hit to short. Throw to first is away. It was wide left, and that allows Maddie Hayden to get to second base. Benavidez did a great job fielding it, but her throw to Ellie Matthews was off the mark. Yeah, she if she'd have gotten her feet under her, maybe she could have made a better throw, although she knew she had to get rid of it quick. Like I said, this game is so quick and so fast. No room for errors. That's also a case where Benavidez looked up, and she's facing due west. The sun was right in her eyes. That may have had an effect on it, too. And I don't know how far off it was for Matthews. Maybe she should have come off the bag, so... There's not a runner standing on second instead of first. As Carly Heath swings and fouls the first pitch off. Carly but, Heath, four straight games of the home run, struck out her first time up. But Maddie Hayden runs so well that, you know, it just creates this doubt in the infielders' heads that they've got to make such a clean play to get her out. 0-1 pitch shows butt, chases and misses. No balls, two strikes. Maybe an attempt there to allow Hayden to take third, but she didn't go and the catcher didn't bite. Maybe so, because uh, you certainly want to bunt strikes, and I'm not so sure that was a strike. Maybe that was just to protect. He's now down to the count 0-2. Rise ball, misses high. Kenna Wilkie delivered only one strikeout. That came back in the first inning. Good job by Katie Brown to go upstairs and get that ball because that rise ball took off. One ball, two strikes. Heath swings and misses. Second strike out of the night. One down, runner on second base for Sophie Pisco. She had a single her first time up. That uh, screwball to the lefty hitters is just kryptonite sometimes when it starts and just ends up in... Let's see where this ball is going to end up. See, it's a strike here, and by the time it ends up, they can't reach it. And Heath's frustration showing on her face as Pisco swings. That's a fly ball hit well to left field. It's gone! Goodbye. Two run, a home run, Sophie Pisco. She had a home run in the game at Appalachian State, and now she has a two-game home run streak herself. It's three to nothing. That was a no-doubter off of the bat. I mean, she got all of it. She gets the home run chain. And teams get to celebrate now. There was a rule there for a while that they couldn't celebrate home runs. No longer. And that's one of the joys of the game. When you see the teams come out of the dugout, celebrate the way they are right here. That's part of the beauty of the game and part of the beauty of Sophie Piscos whacking a ball left over the heart of the plate. I'm I'm not sure. I'm thinking that was a changeup. If it was, it was just, you know, they're on a platter. And Piscos just jumped all over that pitch. As the first pitch to Alexa Langliers catches the outside corner for a strike. And Sophie Pisco swung at an exact same pitch in Appalachian State with the same result. Fly ball to left field. The only difference today is the home run she hit on Sunday went off a truck. That one went into the stands. Ground ball into the glove of Benavidez. It's short throw to first to Matthews. This time is on the mark, two down. And that's 18 home runs that Wilkes has given up. Wilkie has given up. So, you know, you live and die by that rise ball. Ele elevate to celebrate. And Melissa Mayu comes to bat. Here's a look at that ground out to short. An excellent play by Benavidez. She's got a nice glove. Yeah, she does. We talked about that at the home run a little while ago. We talked about your players back in the earliest days of the program having to chase foul balls or home run <laughs> balls before they'd go into a drain. To see the game change as much as it has, to and now players don't have to do that anymore. <laughs> well, you know, no one had hit it over the fence until we moved the, the fence in. The fences were all at 225. The ball was white and it was dead. We moved to a yellow ball. The, pi the pitchers went back to 43 feet. We moved the red fence in. And guess who hit that first home run? You mentioned her. Blaze? Nope. Or Kyla. Kyla. 
it took like the very first game for the ball to go out of the park where it had never gone out of the park before. Wow. As that's a fly ball hit the center field by Mia, but the center fielder Aspen Howie is there to make the catch. Sophie Piscos with a two run home run in the third inning gives Louisiana a three to nothing lead. I love my new home, but it might be too Victorian. Oh gosh, interesting hemline on this. Pants? At least Geico makes bundling my home and car insurance easy. I save so much. Pardon me, Your Grace. Oh, just call me Grace. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. I want ice cream. Seriously? I'm gonna drive to get my ice cream. No, you're not. Play with this. No, I'm driving. Really? Drinking and driving? How old are you? I'm a big boy. The BK $5 Your Way Meal is here to make your choice easy and so tasty. Go straight to the Double Whopper Junior with piping hot small fries, four-piece crispy nuggets, and a refreshing small drink. Can you believe you get all this for only five bucks? The $5 Your Way Meal, only at Burger King. Louisiana and Houston, certainly familiar with each other. These teams have played a ton. Throughout their histories, last year in 2021, Louisiana got a 12 to 5 victory. Melissa Mayu had a home run in that game. Sophie Piscos with a triple, and tonight Sophie Piscos with a home run in the contest, giving Louisiana a three to nothing lead. As there's that home run from Melissa, uh, or one of the home runs in that game, and this home run from Melissa Mayu over the left field wall at that point gave Louisiana their final. 12 to 5 lead and now tonight Louisiana find themselves ahead three to nothing as Amanda Carton leads things off in the top of the fourth inning one ball one strike after she watches that one high and away great job by our guys in the truck and behind the scenes pulling up that video kudos yes indeed now we just have to go back and find video from that 1993 <laughs> season where Kyla hit the first home run over the wall. I doubt there was video. <laughs> one ball, one Actually, strike. Actually, that's a fly ball hit to left field and running in to make the catch as Kayla Falterman went down. Actually, we might have channel three, channel 10, something like that might have had it. Scott Brasta has to have it on beta tape somewhere. Our old friend over at KTC TV3. Uh, We've worked with him for many a years. We take a look at the fly ball, the shallow fly ball to Kayla Falterman, and she has been Johnny on the spot all season long on, on the defensive end. Got a really funny story about that. They both came to the World Series with us, and um, they were interviewing us, and I took the mic from them <laughs> from both stations and held it, and I talked for both stations. <laughs> it's like you're the president. You had two microphones. <laughs> No, I was representing 10, I was representing three. and <laughs> First time they had been on the air together, it took softball to bring yeah, two rivals yeah. together. It was funny. As Aspen Howie comes to bat, she has one ball on her. But that just shows you how united this city is when it comes to this program. Absolutely. As that pitch catches the bottom of the, of the zone in the corner for a strike, look at that spin. Yeah, you, uh, that's a tough pitch to hit. Talk about a pitcher's pitch. Howie with the strikeout her first time up in the first inning. Shorman with the wind and the delivery swung on and fouled out of play. And that unifying factor this team brings to City has been there from day one. Going back to, as we mentioned, playing across the way where part of the track and soccer complex is now to coming here to what was in Lady Cajun Park, winning the Southland Conference Championship in the mid to late 80s. At Pelican Park. At Pelican Park becoming uh, an independent and becoming an independent power at that. One, two, pitch, strike call on the outside corner. See, they're just, they're kind of fooling the hitters. We're going with the uh, curveballs, screwballs, and then the changeup uh, placed on the outside corner for 
Another strikeout. Six strikeout of the night delivered by Megan Shorman. And that one. And a good job a, by Piscus. A good Sticking job frame, ball. right. And you said the key word, she stuck it. She didn't drag it, she let the umpire see where it was, and he called it immediately. Two down for Bethany Bush, fly out to right field her first time up. Shorman pitches, it's bunted foul. And another part of the game changing over the years, Pelican Park, the complex in Karen Crow, a really nice facility. A conference championship game being held in that time, Karen Crow was a city of only about 3,500, 4,000 people, now about 10,000. Even then, a conference championship being held at a municipal complex is almost unheard of nowadays. Yeah, because so many facilities are just dynamite. Why would we go play at a facility that's not really made for just that sport? I mean, right. yes, they can play softball there, but you've got the grandstands and all these home facilities that are just phenomenal. And, and Pelican Park is no slouch of a park either. If you've been there lately, they have done a mighty fine job of, of bringing it up to date and putting it to where it's a, a softball mecca. But you're right. You go there, and their bread and butter now is youth sports. And that just shows where college softball has moved. Coming into a palace like a Lampson Park, you look at the facility in Austin, Texas, Red McCombs uh, Stadium there. College softball has changed, and it's now a big money sport. Build it and they will come. Yes, indeed. 2-1 pitch. Swung on. High fly ball. Hit to center field. Maddie Hayden calls everyone off. Makes the catch to retire Bethany Bush and to retire the side. No run scored. No hits. No errors. Nobody left. Through three and a half. Louisiana leads Houston three to nothing. Meet Renee, bank manager and mother. But when she gets on her bike, she becomes Rebel Renee. Rebel Renee isn't about greasing some palms to get things done. And she rides with Geico because she'd never rebel against great service. Geico, savings and service for both your sides. I want ice cream. Seriously? I'm gonna drive to get my ice cream. No, you're not. Play with this. No, I'm driving. Really? Drinking and driving? How old are you? I'm a big boy. Louisiana Sophie Piscos on a four-game home run streak. This is one of those home runs. A three-run shot in the first inning against Indiana. And then against Appalachian State on Friday. That home run you saw there was the Cajuns' only run in that contest. Her five home runs over the four games, earning her Sunbelt Conference Player of the Week honors. As Laney Crater swings and misses on the first pitch in the bottom of the fourth inning. I'm beginning to think Crater's uh, helmet doesn't fit right. Reminds me of Pete Rose. If you remember when he yeah, would run, right. his, his helmet would fly off. But with Lainey Crater, it's when she's at the plate. Every time she swings, it's... Uh... As Megan Lee enters the game in the circle, gets a strike call on that pitch on the outside corner. So Houston making the change in this midweek game as we go to the fourth inning. Megan Lee is going to throw a curve, a screw, a drop, and a change. She's going to throw 61-62, so not quite as, as uh, fast. 54-mile-an-hour change. Her go-to is going to be her screw and her curve, so she's going to work east and west. She missed on that drop ball a moment ago. Now ahead of the count, one ball, two strikes. Crate air awaits the pitch. The wind, the delivery. Misses outside for a ball. Two balls, two strikes. Megan Lee, a 4-2 and two record on the season. She has a save in 43 and a third pitch. 
has given up 38 runs, 32 of them earned on 62 hits. She has 25 strikeouts and 27 walks. Now even in the count of two and two, Laney Crater battling her way back. Lee comes with it and misses low, full count. Meanwhile, the starting pitcher Wiley leaves the game after three innings pitched, gave up three earned runs on four hits, struck out two and walked two. She also hit a batter. And after being ahead in the count, 0 oh and 2, Lee finds herself even, or excuse me, full. Payoff pitch misses low, and Laney Crater has a leadoff walk in the bottom of the fourth. Kind of a common theme for the Cougars uh, walking the leadoff hitter for the Cajuns. Third time in four innings that they've done that. And in fact, they've given up a leadoff batter runner in every inning. In the third inning, Maddie Hayden reached on a throwing error by the shortstop. So four straight innings, four leadoff runners for Louisiana. As Kramer Ushday comes to bat, she had a single her last time up. And Lee having trouble finding the strike zone early on. As a coach in this situation, what do you tell your pitcher? What do you have your catcher tell your pitcher if she's entering a game and struggling this much? One pitch at a time. One pitch at a time. 1 0 pitch from Lee. Chase that one low. It's a fair ball, slow roller, and nothing that Lee could do after fielding it. It was such a slow roller that Ushday reaches on the infield single. All she could have done maybe is pick that ball up with bare hand and submarine that ball over there and it probably still wouldn't have gotten her out. As you said, it just couldn't have ro uh, rolled any slower. That is the definition of a swinging bunt. <laughs> you usually see those in slow pitch softball, but Every now and again, you'll see it in fast pitch with a low enough pitch and a batter getting right on top of it. That's the result. As Kayla Falchman comes to bat, first pitch misses low for a ball, grounded out her first time up to second base. However, that ground out resulted in an RBI. Falchman seventh of the season. With runners on first and second. Pitch misses low, runners go, nope, throw back to second. As the ball gets to center field and the runners wisely think better of it. That ball didn't get nearly far enough for Laney Crater to take off. No, and the fans were letting her know, stay. <laughs> As Crater took a nice lead to throw back and give credit to the center fielder, Aspen Howie, coming up to prevent Crater from going. Two balls, no strikes. And as time's called, the catcher, Katie Ray Brown, wants to have a word with the pitcher, Lee. And for Laney Crater, after what happened to her in the game on Saturday, she certainly wants to minimize any damage on the base pass. She had a single as a pinch hitter, turned for two, thought she had it, got thrown out on a rifle of a shot by Appalachian State's right fielder. For those of you who are joining us late, Louisiana taking advantage of Houston early. The Cajuns with that RBI grounded by Kayla Falchman took a one to nothing lead in the first inning. Reno O'Neill scored. And then Sophie Piscos in the third inning. That two run home run driving in Maddie Hayden who reached on a lead off Arab made the game three to nothing. Megan Shorman doing a fantastic job pitching for Louisiana so far in the contest with six strikeouts. She's been in total control. Cajuns have given her some run support here. Of course, they'd like more. And they're threatening again. As Kayla Falterman with runners on first and second. Nobody on bottom of the fourth inning. Awaits Lee's 2-0 pitch. Here it is. Shows bunt. Pops it up. Into foul territory. Is it caught? Yes, it is. And Laney Crater on the base pads is oh, thrown out. Oh, my that goodness. Is a horrible base running error. And the crowd not happy, and the Cajuns coaching staff none too thrilled either. Oh, no. <laughs> That's not going to get you written in the lineup too often, but um, got to remember that uh, you've got some big-time arms now on the other team. Just a, yeah, just a bad base running mistake. And Crater tagged up. She took too far of a lead and was too slow getting back to second base. 
It wasn't on the force. So it's a 2-8 double play for Houston to retire the lead runner. Ushday remains at first base as Stormy Constantine comes to bat with two out. And what could have been a big inning for Louisiana is now one out away from being over. Yeah, they again kind of blew up an inning on themselves. Kotsenik is 0 for 1 today. Walk in the first inning, fly out to left in the second. That was a good job by Brown to go get that ball and then make a strong throw and double her off. Certainly was. A less experienced catcher would have seen that, given up on it, thinking, oh, it's in the net. Nope, she charged for it, got it, and then made the play at second base. Stormy Kotsenik watching three pitches all miss outside. Three balls, no, stri no strikes as Kotsenik that steely look in her eyes, she is focused. And that's one thing with Stormy Kotsnick. When she's on the bus, around the team, she's very loose. But when she's at the plate, she is laser focused. 3-0 pitch, that one right down the middle for a strike. She enjoys playing softball. If she hits her home run, watch her stare at that ball going over the, the fence and kind of tosses her bat aside. Of course, she comes from a ball play, playing family, doesn't she? Yes, she does. 3-1 pitch, misses outside, and they forgot the fact that it's a force. The throw to second goes to the outfield, and that allows Kramer Rushday to reach third base. Yeah, it was ball four, didn't really need to make that throw to second. Catcher kind of forgot about the count, I think. Of course, our first instinct, instinct. see the runner going. Ushday reaches, the, reaches third on the error by the catcher. That's the official ruling. And there's no other way you can uh, rule that. That is certainly an E2. And that's probably why um, as Maddie Hayden comes to bat. One for two on the night. Benavides, Fielders choice and an error. It's probably why Benavides was a little slow going to second because it was a walk. As a throw to second, is cut off, trying to make sure that Ushday doesn't score from third. Good heads up play there by the first baseman, L.A. Matthews, to run over. Or, pardon me, that's the second baseman who came in to yeah. stop the ball. That's Becca Schulte. That's a call play. Mm -hmm. you, um, you're supposed to, if you see the runner going, you cut it so you can get that lead runner out. That's a high fly ball down the left field line, running over to the line and making the catch as Amanda Carton to retire the side. Cajuns get runner, gets the runner to third base, but can't score. Cajuns maintain the 3-0 lead as we go to the fifth. To perform, you need speed, skill, strength. With every muscle, every move, you push your body to reach its full potential. But sometimes you just can't push through the pain. That's when you know it's time to address it. So when injury puts you on the sidelines, trust us to get you back in the game. Lord Sports Care, the team behind your team. We all have dreams. I want to dance. I like to build things. I want to explore. For over 120 years, the University of Louisiana at Lafayette has made it possible for young dreams to become realities. So go ahead, dream big. We'll help you make those dreams come true. Take a look at our blast from the past. And this one not too terribly long ago. This is back in 2018, May 19th, the NCAA Regional. The Louisiana Raging Cajuns taking on the Houston Cougars. And Louisiana getting the job done in that contest against 
the Cougars to advance to the championship against LSU and Louisiana trying to get back to the regionals. And right now, if if you were to take a look at the standings, the RPI, you know the Cajuns are in. The question is, where do they go and what seed? Yeah, you know, it's a thorn in my side that it's all about geography. You know, for, for a while there, I didn't think the Tigers were going to host, but they've come on. But So you would have LSU, which will probably get in, the Cajuns, who will probably get in, McNeese, who is winning the Southland now. So... Um, you got three Louisiana schools that can drive to each other. Yeah. So here we go again. They're going to all get paired again, which, you know, I, I, I just don't like it because when will the Cajuns and the Tigers, when will they ever get to get go to the World Series? Together. Together. Because they're always putting one another out in a regional or a super regional. Yeah. And so, and you know, it's all about money. It's all about money and all trying to save money with the pe- the matchup. So, but you know, it could not happen, but <laughs> it happens every other year. Yeah, it does. Becca Schulte leading off the fifth inning for Houston. She struck out of the second inning. Now even in the count one and one. And to your thought, I mean, how cool would that be? It would be if you put McNeese in, say, one of the regionals out in Texas, because you figure Texas will host in Austin. That pitch misses outside for a ball. Texas A&M right now is on the bubble in terms of, of of hosting. You look at some of the other schools farther east that maybe you could pair Louisiana or LSU with. There's no reason why you couldn't see an LSU-Louisiana Super Regional or should it happen a McNeese-Louisiana or a McNeese-LSU Super Regional. As that pitch is hit well into center field and it is gone. Just beyond the outstretched glove of the left fielder Kaylor Falterman. That's a leadoff home run for Becca Schulte. Another one for Schulte. We talked about her in the pregame as an impact player, and boy, did she make an impact there. Home run number 13 on the year, RBI number 44. She makes it a three to one game. My point is that I don't, you know, well, they're not both in the top eight, so, you know, that, that, that hurts the super regional thing, but it, not even to be paired in super regionals. But yeah, that off the bat, you knew that ball was going out. Yeah, that I, I'm a bit surprised it didn't carry farther than what it did because it looked like a rocket was, off the bat. Yeah. And it landed just on the other side of the wall. It was higher more than it was like a line drive. Right. But I thought it had the potential to get out. Hitter's ballpark, it always has been since it's been been constructed here, tucked into a Nice little spot among the trees and the buildings and where we stand where we're sitting now, Ian, used to be a barbed wire fence <laughs> with bulls and cows uh, in the playing field that you're looking at. As Katie Ray Brown files that one back, and that's the amazing part. This was a dairy barn, uh, along with the property across the street that makes up the Cajun Dome. This was all an agricultural facility, a dairy barn, as you mentioned, bulls and cows. But somehow you managed to convince the administration to put a softball park here. Now it's one of the finest in the country. Actually, I just wanted a park. They, uh, Dr. Audemont put it here, and I thought they were hiding us because there was no Cajun Dome road. You couldn't even get to the, this ballpark. Brown hits that one well to left field, nearly the same spot where Schulte put ho- hers over the wall. But Brown, only with warning track power, is put out on the catch by Falterman. One down brings up L.A. Matthews. But you're right, two hard hit, that's a change up that just kind of floats. Two hard hit balls here. And it brings up L.A. Matthews. Struck out swinging her first time up. Megan Shorman giving up that home run earlier in the frame. Only run so far of the evening by Houston. Matthews fouls that pitch off 0-1. You mentioned that you, you were afraid people wouldn't find you. The old uh, field you played at, the makeshift field then, was right along Bertrand Drive so people could see you. You had visibility. Cajun Dome Boulevard, as you mentioned, wasn't built for, what, two, three years after, until two or three years I after the Cajun moved here. pictures of all of that construction, but you talk about uh, couldn't see us. They could see us on Bertrand. They would just jump right over the fence while we were playing softball to come get their intramural ball or... <laughs> or, you know, just drive right up to the field and put their beer on top of the 
dug out <laughs> bench. And you didn't even know it was there. So it's a wild and woolly past. Matthew swings and misses on the 1-1 one, one pitch. One ball, two strikes. It's a wild and woolly past, but that's what makes this program so great as we look at the replay. Nice little screwball. That's what makes the this the history of this program so great. You look at how softball has come of age in the NCAA as the one-two pitch comes in. Swung on, fielded by Quinones at third base, throw over to Kostnick at first for the out. We should note the defensive change. Ari Quinones coming into the game to play at third base. Kostnick moves over to first to replace Laney Crater in that spot. Well, just the fact that we're doing this tonight, that it's on TV. The TV was the last hurdle for our great sport. And once we got it on, uh, you know, that the, the Women's College World Series was aired every game as opposed to not aired, then one game was aired, then it was tape delayed, and then, you know, now it's every pitch, every game. Live. And then all of this ESPN coverage has just, you know, vaulted this this uh, sport into the limelight of NCAA sports. Indeed it has. Bailey Myers at bat. She singled her first time up. Now ahead in the count, one ball, no strikes. Shorman winds and delivers. Swung on, fouled back. But the Wild and Willie history of this program, and you look at some of the other early programs that came along and what they had to do to get facilities, to get uniforms, to get equipment, compared to looking at programs that have started over the last 15, 20, 25 years, where they had everything given to them right then and there. It, it goes to show the hard work that some of the early programs and early coaches like you were able to put in. That work is now paying off. Well, 50 years of Title IX this year, and um, it's just phenomenal to see the opportunities that young women have now. I mean, I wasn't even allowed to play any kind of ball when I was growing up, and now little girls can do just about anything they want now, which is awesome. And Megan Shorman doing anything she wants in the circle. That low rise a second ago was a thing of beauty. One ball, two strikes to Myers. Swing and fouls that one back. And you mentioned 50 years of Title IX when you played, girls weren't allowed to play sports. Do you look at athletes like yourself, the Kyla Hall Holises? You look at Lacey Prejean, who, who's played both softball and baseball, played baseball on a professional level, uh, and has some great stories to, to tell about her days playing. And to the many other athletes who have come through here, Kim Parrott, who played her college ball, college basketball here at the University of Louisiana. It's a testament to how far we've come and how far women's sports have advanced over the years. We take a look at that video, another blast from the past. This is from the early 1990s. The USL Lady Cajuns at this very facility. We called up Scott Brasden, got the video. <laughs> and that same red wall is there. <laughs> no, it's not. Look, that's Patrick Murphy at first base. Uh, uh, that was uh, Lana Jimenez in the camera at the beginning, who's married to Brandon Stokely, you know? Yep. Kathy Morton, one of the greatest of all hitters in this program. Okay, yes, and we wore shorts then. Right. That We're was not wearing them in this game. The other team is, but we did actually have shorts. The Cajuns program had shorts all the way up until the mid-2000s, early 20-teens. And you mentioned Patrick Murphy, and his story is excellent as well. 2-2 two -two pitch. Strike three called at the belt to retire the side. Becca Schulte gets Houston on the board with a solo home run. It's 3-1 to one as we go to the bottom of the fifth inning. Lucky for me, there's some great golf here in the Carolinas. Whether you golf or not, Geico could help you score some great savings on car insurance. Whoa. Oh, all in one. Geico. See all the ways you could save. I want ice cream. Seriously? I'm gonna drive to get my ice cream. No, you're not. Play with this. 
No, I'm driving. Really? Drinking and driving? How old are you? I'm a big boy. <sighs> the BK Five Dollar Your Way Meal is here to make your choice easy and so tasty. Go straight to the Double Whopper Junior with piping hot small fries, four piece crispy nuggets, and a refreshing small drink. Can you believe you get all this for only five bucks? The Five Dollar Your Way Meal only at Burger King. The Louisiana Ragin' Cajuns lead the Houston Cougars 3-1, to one, and we just missed it. The music just stopped for the fifth inning stretch, but we got some of it on tape. The Cajuns players dancing, the fans dancing to some Zonico music here at Lamson Park, and it goes to talk about, or it goes to show the culture that we were talking about a little while ago, where people love the game, they love the culture here, and when you put the two together, it's the perfect combination. Sherilyn Vizé le leading those dances, uh, a long-time fan, but uh, like you said, Nowhere else but Cajun country and Ian, the smells that come up from the <laughs> concession stand below us are just incredible. Carly Heath grounding out to the pitcher. That went off the cap of the bat and a slow roller back to the pitcher lead for the first out as Sophie Piscos comes to bat. We have some defensive changes here in the inning. Lee's in the circle, Brown at catcher. Matthews remains at first, Schulte at second, Myers at third, Benavidez at short, Cardin, Howie, Holsey in the outfield. As we go back to Sophie Piscos, this is back in the third inning. Piscos with a two-run home run. That's the difference in the contest right now. A bomb down the left field line to give the Cajuns at that point a three to nothing lead. The Energizer Bunny with the bomb. Piss goes two for two, single in that home run. Swings on this pitch. Fly ball. It's a no man's land and right center field. And that's her third hit of the evening. Two singles and a home run for Sophie Piscos. She gets excited when she gets a hit. Yes, she does. It excites everyone else. And she's the first person to start dancing when the music she likes starts playing. But all business at the plate. And you can see the look on her face right now. She's thinking to herself, really? I'm three for three right now? And you know the pitchers just must love to throw to her as a catcher, as a receiver. Ball's got eyes for her tonight besides the home run ball. Absolutely. And Piscos has put in a lot of work in improving her game throughout the season, both at the plate and behind the plate as the catcher. And she has great support from her family. And they're her, gonna, gonna uh, give her legs a rest here and pinch runner. Yeah, which is a smart move as Taylor Roman comes in to pinch run. As going back to Sophie Piscos, and we talk about the support that the fans give. But player support is huge. Piscos' family travels to almost every road game. They come to Lafayette for most of the home games. And during the road trip, we saw parents from several of the players and a lot of other family members, cousins, aunts, uncles, traveling to see these kids play during their spring break road trip. It is phenomenal. Well, that's what the beauty of this sport, again, so many uh, parents are invested. That's a line drive into center field. Alexa Langliers will drive in Taylor Roman, who comes home all the way to third is Langliers. She gets to stop sign at third base. That's an RBI triple from Alexa Langliers. How we tried to get in front of that ball in center field, and it just scooted on that carpet. And you knew that was a run. It was just a matter of if they were going to send her all the way around. And the only reason why Langliers does not have an inside the park home run is that throw coming in from Aspen Howie. Good hustle by her. She lets that ball get past her, but I mean, she's on an island out there. The right field and the left fielder can't get to it uh, fast enough. But talking oh. about the family atmosphere, that's mm -hmm. always been something that you, I'm, I'm not going to say unique because I didn't coach any other sport, but it, it's just so common in the softball world that families uh, travel, their support, and of course, I keep talking about the cooking. You know, everybody loves to do that, but um, that's what's great about softball. Oh, my. Who is that? Oh, my. A young Yvette Girard. <laughs> this is what? Vi a video from 1992-93. That's Allison Habits. That's probably the first World Series team right there. And I remember those bleachers that before the press box was there 
from 1993. Allison Habits now an assistant at the University of Alabama. Patrick Murphy, the head coach there, as that pitch is bunted by Melissa Mayu. We had a squeeze going on there. By the way, that Langoliers uh, shot, it's credited as an RBI single. They credit a fielding error by the center fielder to allow her to advance to third base. Yeah, she came in and that ball just scoot, like I said, took off on that carpet out there. So, uh, turf field, turf outfield. As Mayu watches that one inside. If we can go back to that video from 1993. Yeah, I wish I could go back to that week. You were, <laughs> you were, <laughs> you were there. Patrick Murphy is your assistant coach. He had come over from the Sports Athletic it. Communications Office. Sports information. As Mayu lines that one in the left field for base hit. Mayu going to second and driving in Alexa Langleyers to make it a five to one game. Hitting is contagious. I thought that was a good call with the squeeze when a lot of things had just happened. Try to keep the, uh, try to get the team off uh, balance there. But uh, Cajuns are swinging the bat well tonight. And that's just a rope there. Yeah, on a rise ball too. A fat pitch right over the plate and Melissa Mayu took full advantage of it. That's her first hit of the night. She's now one for three on the evening with that RBI double. We're gonna have another pitching change in the circle. <laughs> Indeed we will. We'll come back with that pitching change after this. Louisiana leads at five to one in the bottom of the fifth inning. Meet Renee, bank manager and mother. But when she gets on her bike, she becomes Rebel Renee. Rebel Renee isn't about greasing some palms to get things done. And she rides with Geico because she'd never rebel against great service. Geico, savings and service for both your sides. I want ice cream. Seriously? I'm gonna drive to get my ice cream. No, you're not. Play with this. No, I'm driving. Really? Drinking and driving? How old are you? I'm a big boy. The BK $5 Your Way Meal is here to make your choice easy and so tasty. Go straight to the Double Whopper Junior. Hannah Todd, the new pitcher for Houston, delivers the first pitch down for a ball. As the Cajuns back to the top of the order, Stormy Kotzenich, one for two today with a walk and a single. And see, curve, screw, drop, and change. The, her go-to pitch is her drop and her screw ball. Kotzenich fouls that one off. Now even in the count, one and one. Todd on the season, nine and seven with the save. 99 into the third innings pitched. Has given up 60 runs, 39 earned on 102 hits. Struck out 52, has walked 42. He's given up eight home runs and eight doubles on the year. 1-1 one, one pitch from Todd. Kotzenich checks the swing. Pitch misses low for a ball, two and one. And there's that drop ball. Trying to get that, keep that ball in the infield. Doesn't miss by much. I have royally messed up my score sheet. Ari Quinones is coming to bat here. As that pitch is lined right into the glove of the third baseman, Myers, throw back to second to retire the sign and end the inning. But not before Louisiana gets two more runs in the inning on three hits and an error. Louisiana leading five to one as we go to the sixth inning. We love our new apartment. There's too much pressure in the bathroom. Good luck with the future in-laws tonight. Don't overthink it. But don't underthink it. At least Geico makes bundling our renters and car insurance easy. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, boy. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com.
I want ice cream. Seriously? I'm going to drive to get my ice cream. No, you're not. Play with this. No, I'm driving. Really? Drinking and driving? How old are you? I'm a big boy. <laughs> Oh. My. Teddy puppies! Yeah, we all got free 5G phones from Cricket, and now we're making content. I want to make content! <gasps> Hi! Easy on the megapixels, buddy. Get a free 5G phone! Smile! You're on Cricket. Louisiana Rage and Cajuns hosting Coastal Carolina. Single game Friday, doubleheader on Saturday, final home series of the season. And ULM on the road. The Cajuns close out the season in Monroe. Next weekend in the Sunbelt Conference Tournament, the weekend after that, first pitch. Hitting the knee of Rock Benavidez, and she's awarded first base. A leadoff hit by pitch. And for the first time in this contest, make that the second time in the contest, a leadoff batter reaches base. It happened last inning, but with the Becca Schulte home run. And that pitch, ooh, catching the top of the knee. Didn't flinch too much, though. And here comes Justin Robichaux to talk to Shoreman. And Justin and Robichaux in his first year as the pitching coach is first to say there's not much difference between baseball pitching and, and softball pitching. He's learned the mechanics and learned how things go. As Kendra Lamb will come in in just a moment. We'll have the final stat line for Megan Shoreman in a moment. Cajuns lead at 5-1. Lucky for me, there's some great golf here in the Carolinas. Whether you golf or not, Geico could help you score some great savings on car insurance. Whoa! Oh, hole in one. Geico. See all the ways you could save. $5 Your Way meal is here to make your choice easy and so tasty. Go straight to the Double Whopper Junior with piping hot small fries, four piece crispy nuggets, and a refreshing small drink. Can you believe you get all this for only five bucks? The $5 Your Way meal only at Burger King. Kendra Lamb enters the game for the Louisiana Rage and Cajuns. Lamb on the season, a 184 ERA with an 8-4 record. An 83 and two-thirds innings pitch has given up 27 runs, 22 earned on 44 hits. 127 strikeouts leads the team in that category. And Kendra Lamb, the native of Curajong, New South Wales, Australia, certainly proving her strength in the circle all throughout the season. And for the Cajuns, she needs to be their ace going into, uh, going into the postseason. The eight, uh, as you said, the ace of the staff, she's a, the hardest thrower, 66, 67 miles an hour. She's going to throw a screw, a rise. Got a good looking change up. Megan Shorman leaving the game after pitching five innings. Fantastic work in that time. Gave up one run on that home run. That home run was one of two hits. She struck out eight and hit one batter. As the first pitch to Paige Holsey, misses for a ball. Holsey with a ground out to second and a strikeout in this contest. You missed, mentioned Justin Robichaux, and he's all about the art and science of getting people out. 1-0 pitch from Kandra Lamb, the wine delivery. And Holsey watches it, catch the bottom of the zone for a strike. And Justin Robichaux, in many ways, is like his father, Tony. Very quiet, very mild-mannered when you talk to him very philosophical and he loves the game and as someone who's coming in from baseball to softball he has taken to this sport quite well learning the nuances the differences between baseball softball and if you look at what he's been able to do and getting the velocity of these pitchers even with the Kandra Lamb to where they are now touching on 70 miles an hour you can see that he's going to be as a coach a force to be reckoned with over the years well the apple does certainly does not fall far from the tree what a was there a better man that walked the face of the earth than Tony Robichaux? One-two pitch fouled back. 
And the count holds for Paige Holsey. Now you coached here from 1981 to 2000. So Tony and you shared the campus for almost a decade. And you two got to be awfully close and remain close throughout the rest of his life. I uh, spent five years, five years, five hours with Tony on his on his visit here from McNeese to see if he wanted this job. And we, you know, we, uh, we hit it off immediately. And again, just, um, just a special, special human being. Yes, indeed. Two balls, two strikes to Paige Holsey as Lamb's pitch missed high a moment ago. Here's the pitch from Lamb, the line, the delivery. Swing and a miss, struck her out. One down. The Cougars are going to get a steady dose of rise balls, screw balls. Let's see, I think we'll see a rise here. Yep. And a beautiful one at that. Had Holsey fooled the entire way as Amanda Carden comes up. Over two tonight with a pop out and a fly out. Runner remains at first base with one out top of the sixth inning. Lamb gets her to swing and miss. Lamb is so strong. She reminds me of like how a guy pitches. She's so upper body strong. And that's a testament to not only the Lamb's raw talent, but you look at Chris Anderson, the rest of the strength and conditioning staff that works with the softball team, they do a fantastic job getting these players ready. Lower body strength, upper body strength, you name it, they do it as that pitch misses high, one and one. And I think Lamb's uh, hurdle was, you know, confidence and the mental game within that circle. And she's come a long way since she arrived here in Lafayette. Oh, yes, she has. One ball, one strike. That pitch swung on and fouled out of play. When Kandra first got here, you could tell that she was nervous, that she didn't quite have that confidence. Then you look at the COVID year and things that happened, comes back last year, that confidence is there. And this year, she's taken it, she's turned it up to 11, as a, a certain movie might say. Going back to Justin Roba's show for a moment, back at the Texas game about a month ago as Lamb delivers the 1-2 pitch. Swung on, fly ball, hit to left field. Falterman runs up, makes the catch, two down. At the uh, game in Austin, Justin came out of the dugout to talk to one of the pitchers, and I forget if it was Kandra or if it was Sam Landry. And the folks over at Texas started playing Booker T and the MG's Green Onions. And those who are fans of Louisiana Rage and Cajuns baseball know that was Tony's walk-up music. Tony never knew what the name of the song was, who did it or what. I don't even know if he ever noticed. But Jay Walker tells a story to ask Tony, hey, Tony, what's the name of that song you walk out to? I don't know. I never noticed it. The folks in Austin, I don't know if they did it intentionally yeah. or didn't realize they did, played Green Onions as Justin walked out. So I asked him at Texas State, Justin, you heard? did you realize what they did the other night? No, I don't pay attention to the music, just like his father. Just like his father. In his own. Yes, indeed. As Aspen Howie comes to bat, two strikeouts on the night, one swinging, one looking. How about that, though, that uh, coincidence? You just gave me chills. Janiah Thomas, I should say, pinch hitting for Aspen Howie. Ahead in the count, one ball, no strikes. Lamb winds, delivers. And that pitch catches the outside corner for a strike as Thomas did not necessarily like that call. Good looking low screwball right in the legs. Lamb working deliberately tonight. 1-1 one, one pitch, misses low, bounces that one. I think that was her change up. She might have intentionally left it short when you're ahead on the hitter. And that's something we've seen this year with Kandra, where that changeup sometimes gets away from her, where she's trying to work it lower than usual, and she bounces it in front. But we've still seen her get batter swinging at that same pitch. 2-1 from Lamb, swing and a miss, 2-2. Two and two. Well, that's what you want to do. You want the, the sell of the pitch to influence the hitter to swing. And she just throws this one past her. Thomas even in the count, two balls, two strikes. 
Awaits Lamb's pitch. Here it is. Swing and a miss. Struck her out. Kandra Lamb with two strikeouts in the sixth inning as she enters in relief work. Louisiana maintains a 5-1 lead as we go to the bottom of the sixth. I want ice cream. Seriously? I'm gonna drive to get my ice cream. No, you're not. Play with this. No, I'm driving. Really? Drinking and driving? How old are you? I'm a big boy. The BK $5 Your Way Meal is here to make your choice easy and so tasty. Go straight to the Double Whopper Junior with piping hot small fries, four-piece crispy nuggets, and a refreshing small drink. Can you believe you get all this for only five bucks? The $5 Your Way Meal, only at Burger King. He dreamed of being a baseball legend. Now, he's been named most valuable twice. Bryce Harper, living the dream on Sunday Night Baseball. The Sun Belt Conference will have a new look starting on January, or excuse me, on July the 31st, as four new schools enter the conference. Marshall, ODU, JMU, and Southern Miss will be joining the conference, and that'll certainly make everything in terms of competition, in terms of expanding the conference, will make the Sun Belt even more powerful. And if you look at the at the powers in softball, James Madison that are coming in, Southern Miss, a perennial contender for the NCAA regionals. The Cajuns will have several new foes and certainly will help them in terms of RPI and strength of schedule. Yeah, it's some well-known names in there that are uh, joining the conference, well-known names in the softball world. Yeah, James Madison last year with their run of the College World Series turning some heads as they prepare to join the Sun Belt Conference. Captured everyone's heart. Yes, they did. As Louisiana in the bottom of the sixth inning. Looking to get something going as Kramer Ushday leads off the frame. Ahead in the count, two balls, one strike. Hannah Todd remains in the circle for Houston. 2-1 pitch from Todd. Misses low for a ball. The catcher, Katie Ray Brown, doing her best to frame those pitches. She got a strike call on the previous pitch, but that one not so much. Ush Day with two singles tonight. Wouldn't mind a leadoff walk here. Todd delivers, misses low and away, and there's that leadoff walk. <laughs> it has really haunted the Houston Cougars tonight. And the Ragin' Cajuns, even though they lead by four in the bottom of the sixth, an insurance run or two here for them certainly wouldn't hurt. Because we saw in the game last week with Illinois, the Cajuns got an insurance run. They were ahead two to nothing going into the final inning. And then Illinois tied the game four to two, or excuse me, tied the game two all in the seventh inning. Cajuns wound up winning in the eighth, four to two, but still. Louisiana learning a thing or two in that contest about getting insurance runs and getting them in a timely manner. Take all that you can get. That's Kayla Falterman with the 0-1 count. Watches that pitch on the outside corner. Strike two called. We always talked about playing like the scoreboard says 0-0 zero to zero until yes. the umpire says ball game. And for Houston, even though they're down by four right now, this is a team that with regional aspirations. They're going to play hard as that ball is hit hard. Down the third baseline, fielded fair, throw to first, not in time, an infield hit for Kayla Falterman. Good pick by Matthews, and uh, Coach Vesley's going to come out and kind of dispute this call a little bit. I don't know if we can show it again. Coach Vesely, as she talks to the umpire, 
ground ball two hop fielded fair by the third baseman Myers throw to first no the foot looked like it was pulled and that's why the umpire hesitated and you look right there from that angle it's hard to tell and the umpires don't even conference they say nope she say a foot was pulled so coach Vesely not winning that argument with first base umpire Michael Thibodeau as he gives the infield fly signal. You saw him beat his chest. He's not doing a mea culpa. That's the signal an infield fly. <laughs> Nobody out. Runners on first and second. As the first pitch to Stormy Kaltznik. Which Vesley was doing the same thing, but I think she was saying she wanted her infield in a little tighter. That pitch misses just high for a ball. One ball, no, no strikes. By the way, for Falterman, that's her first hit of the night. Kotzelnik watches the 1-0 pitch at the bottom of the zone, outside corner. Strike one called, one and one. Cougars have a shift on in the outfield, definitely playing like a left center adjustment. The huge gap between center field and right. 1-1 one, one pitch, foul towards the cage of dugout. That may have caught Lacey Prejean. And she's smiling. I, th I think it did catch her in the shoe. Jump now while you can, Lacey, because as you get older, it's harder to avoid. Well, she's a catcher, so it's already kind of <laughs> hard. We always say we'd be better nope. off with yep. it. There it goes. Caromed off the wall and got her in the back of the leg. That's going to leave a mark in the morning. That we pitch always said off. it would be better off if we had a glove. <laughs> We mentioned Lacey Prejean, her softball and baseball background, was a catcher in her, in her baseball days. And even then, you saw a moment ago, she jumped a little bit. So it shows she still has some life left in those knees despite playing behind the plate. And that's a ground ball hit to short. Benavidez flips it over to second base and Schulte for the out. Well, how about the Cajuns here? And Houston not paying attention, allowing Stormy Kotzelnik to get the second base. So a fielder's choice turned into two bases because Kotzenich recognized the fact that neither Benavidez nor Schulte were paying attention. Yeah, Schulte walked that ball back to the circle, paying attention to the runner at third. Let's see, and she kind of turns her back to the runner here. Kind of forgets about her. Yep, takes Look, her never time, looks at her, back. Never looks at her. And by the time she throws the ball back, Kotzenich had taken off. Good heads up uh, softball. I think we just missed a play at the plate. Now the question is, are the umpires going to discuss a possible look back rule situation? That's the only thing I can think of, but there is no look back rule because the ball was not in the circle. We have a player down, that's what happened. It's Maddie Hayden. Let's see if we can see that last play again because I think we completely missed it. And now they're going to rule a player out. So there was a play at home that we did miss. Kramer Ushday was put out. So runners on first and third. As Maddie Hayden walks in. So Hayden grounds. The flip to first. Oh, that's why she went down awkwardly. Uh, player went down awkwardly there on the ankle. She's out at home on the throw. But Hayden reaching on the fielder's choice. Looks like she may have rolled her ankle Cajuns at first base. Yeah, Cajuns wanted obstruction at the plate, but there was no obstruction. And, oh, that, this would be a huge loss. Yes, it would be. And now the umpires are talking maybe about that possible obstruction. as the officials continue to discuss, and now they'll have a word with Jerry Glasgow. They're waving him over. And all three officials are going over to talk to Coach Glasgow. Can you read Lipsy Vet? Yeah. No. I don't think Jerry's going to argue it too much. Okay, so you can't set up until you have the ball, but ball is between... The player. Right. And at this angle, you really can't tell if she is blocking, blocking the, plate the plate before she has the ball. 
It appears she sets up in front, but the question is, did she move in front before may or receiving possession of the ball? From that mm -hmm. angle, you can't tell. And she gave her a passageway to, to slide. Right. As the officials now confer with Lacey Prejean for a li lineup change, two out in the sixth inning, Louisiana leads at five to one. I love my new home, but it might be too Victorian. Oh gosh, interesting hemline on this. Pants? At least Geico makes bundling my home and car insurance easy. I save so much. Pardon me, Your Grace. Oh, just call me Grace. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. I want ice cream. Seriously? I'm gonna drive to get my ice cream. No, you're not. Play with this. No, I'm driving. Really? Drinking and driving? How old are you? I'm a big boy. The BK $5 Your Way Meal is here to make your choice easy and so tasty. Go straight to the Double Whopper Junior with piping hot small fries, four-piece crispy nuggets, and a refreshing small drink. Can you believe you get all this for only five bucks? The $5 Your Way Meal, only at Burger King. We are back at Lamson Park, the Louisiana Rage and Cajuns hosting Coastal Carolina Friday at 6 o'clock, then a doubleheader on Saturday starting at 2 o'clock. Both of those games on ESPN+. Plus. They close out the schedule at ULM on May 5th, 6th, and 7th, then the Sun Belt Tournament in Mobile on May the 10th, and the week after that, the NCAA Regionals, and then after that, Louisiana plays its way through the postseason. Win and stay alive. Simply put, that's what the Cajuns have to do. We finally have confirmation as to what happened a second ago. Maddie Hayden, who injured herself at first base, was ruled out, apparently on interference. So that's where the third out came in. No, check that. They ruled her as she slipped and fell, turning towards second. They came back, tagged her, and that's where they got her for the third out. So top of the seventh inning now for Houston as Bethany Bush comes to bat. Fly out to right, fly out to center. She's 0 for 2 tonight, now down to the count, no balls, one strike. And for Louisiana, it's simple, three outs here, game over. Been a well-pitched ball game by the Cajuns, first by Sherman, and then Lamb is just coming in and smoking them. Yes, she is, 0-2 count now for Brittany Bush after swinging and missing on that changeup. And Kendra Lamb, we talked about her speed in the upper 60s. Coming close to hitting that 70 mile an hour mark, a couple of the Cajuns pitchers so far this season have, in a couple of instances, surpassed the 70 mile an hour mark. So that speed and that velocity certainly improving as the season goes along. You ask me if think to how things have changed? Pitchers throwing 70 miles an hour. When you first started coaching, what was the top speed? I mean, I never clocked anybody at 70 miles an hour. I'd like to. <laughs> These guns now. <laughs> but, uh, I mean, Jenny Finch threw like a 68-mile-an-hour drop ball that you couldn't touch. One, and two, now... pitch fouled off. And you think Jenny Finch may be the preeminent pitcher of her era. Of Never her, touched 70. Of her, her era, uh, Lisa Fernandez, who I consider maybe the greatest collegiate softball player ever. Girl could play third, could pitch, hit home run. She had a bat named after her. Yeah. That was my first exposure to softball, playing in PE using a Lisa Fernandez bat. <laughs> and she beat us in that 93 World Series. One, two pitch, popped up, and went into the net. I think Pisco yes. dropped it trying to catch it on the fly. And that's the thing with Sophie Pisco. doesn't matter if it's in the, if it's in the net. <laughs> she's still going to try <laughs> to catch it. She shares a laugh with the umpire. And she pushed Blue out of the way. <laughs> and now she goes back to that intense mo shouting at Kanja Lamb as she gets ready to deliver the one-two pitch. 
Bush watches the rise ball miss two and two. Houston with a 24-22 and one record coming into tonight's game. And despite the fact their record is near 500, swing and a miss by Bush. Oh, and definitely, yeah, and definitely a pitcher's pitch. As we go back to the end of that last inning, and here's what happened. The throw to first was in time. And here towards the end of the inning, throw to second. Is in time, slide in here to advance the run, play of the plate, the out, and then Maddie Hayden on the next at bat ruled out at first after slipping, falling, and turning towards second base. And we're at the top of the seventh inning. Houston needing four runs to stay alive, one out as Becca Schulte comes to bat. She had that solo home run in the fifth inning. Yeah, she's responsible for the Cougars' only run. And Houston, despite their record, is sitting near 500. This is a team that will more than likely see in the regionals as that pitch misses outside for a ball. Of course, the people dressed all in red behind the plate thinks that's a strike. And of all the people sitting back there, there's only one of them that I know of who's ever umpired a softball <laughs> game. <laughs> well, of course. How about the people in uh, left field saying that was a strike? <laughs> well, everything looks good from back there. That's a good one, Ian. Two balls, no strikes. The pitch, swing and a miss. Two to one to Schulte. And that's one of the beautiful things about the softball community here. You have, and especially the fan base that sits in the grandstand, you have several coaches. There's Dr. Brian Maggard uh, in the replay. You have several current or retired softball coaches. You have a couple of retired umpires and some who've done all of the above. Two one pitch, Mrs. Hyde, three and one. Some very rabid fans that, you know, a lot of older gentlemen that played um, fast pitch like in the service. Right. And that's a beautiful thing. Softball here has a history that predates even the Ragin' Cajuns program. 3-1 pitch to Schulte. Swung on, fouled back. You look at the men's softball program, both slow pitch and fast pitch. ASA, U-Triple-S-A, uh, even some of the city leagues uh, here in Lafayette. It goes back to the post-World War II era. Teams playing in the 50s, playing at national tournaments, winning national and world championships. And even though men's fast pitch is not existent here in Louisiana nowadays, slow pitch is still a huge thing. Kids grow up around the sport. Well, I think I was in the eighth grade. Maybe I was in high school. First time I ever saw a fast pitch game. It was men playing at Beaver Park here in Lafayette. They actually had a league. And I walked up to this fence and said, what is this about? <laughs> Schulte strikes out. Houston at South Florida this weekend in the American Series, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. They close the regular season in non-conference action next week with a doubleheader against Texas A&M at home. So a tough way to close out the season for Houston. But that strength of schedule is certainly going to help them down the stretch. So two out as Katie Ray Brown Pops that one up. It drops at the feet of Ari Quinones. An athletic play. She dived. Not a routine play for anybody. No, not at all. So more than likely an infield hit for Katie Ray Brown. We'll check to see how the official scorer rules it. And hopefully that's a hit because that's kind of in no man's land there. That is Ari Quinones coming in, diving out. And if she had a couple of extra inches to her height, then she would have had that. But Quinones. She kind of called off Langlier's, I think. Maybe Langlers could have gotten to it with a dive, but that's a big maybe. That's a huge maybe. So it is an infield hit. Katie Ray Brown, her first hit of the night. As L.A. Matthews comes to bat, watches the first pitch over the plate for a strike. And Lamb has been impressive in relief. She's just come in and thrown strikes. 0-1 pitch. Swung on, grounded back to Lamb. Throws it over to Kaltenick at first, and that's the ball game. The Louisiana Rage and Cajuns with a home run from Sophie Pisco says the big play of the game gets the win 5-1 over Houston. We're back after this on ESPN+. Plus. Oh, I've travelled all over, telling folks they could save by bundling home and car insurance. But here's the real secret. Eye contact. We just had a moment. Geico.
So people can get a free Samsung Galaxy S22 when they trade in a Galaxy. Any year, any condition. Oh, I get it. So you can take your old phone that you've had for 12 years and loved every minute of and trade it in for something new that suits your life now? That's right, yeah. Then enjoy immediate success. Even though you'll never forget your old phone, ever. It's a great trade. Life-changing. Get a free Samsung Galaxy S22 with any Galaxy trade-in. Any year, any condition. Only at AT&T. Check out this verbo. We're back in Yvette Girard Field at Lamson Park. The Louisiana Rage and Cajuns get the victory over the Houston Cougars. Five runs, nine hits, no errors. One hit, three hit, one run, three hits, three errors for Houston on the night. And for Louisiana, that two-run bomb in the third inning, getting the job done. And it was Sophie Piscos tonight getting the home run. But you see Megan Shorman, she was dynamite the entire game. She got relieved. Later on, we'll see Kendra Lamb come in and she'll just fill up the strike zone and end it for the Cajuns. But there's that bomb with Piscus that you talked about. Yeah, before that, you saw the ground out RBI from Kayla Falchman to drive in the first run of the night. The Pisco's home run made it 3 0 at that point. Then in the fifth inning, Becca Schulte with a solo home run to put Houston on the board 3 1. But Louisiana, after that, getting a couple of insurance runs in the fifth inning. The Cajuns with RBIs from Alexa Langliers and Melissa Mayhew to make it 5-1 to one at that point, and that was the final score tonight for Louisiana, as you mentioned. Megan Shorman getting the win, Kendra Lamb coming in in relief. The Cajuns pitching, getting the job done this evening. Cajuns so, are clicking on all cylinders. So for Yvette Girard, I'm Ian Ozan saying so long from Yvette Girard Field at Lampson Park with the final score, Louisiana 5, Houston 1. All games airing on the ESPN Networks are streaming live and archived on the ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.